What's good, guys? Today is Friday, February the 10th, 2023. This video will be about another incident uh, similar to the one I just did the video on coming out of Philadelphia, except this time it's coming out of Fort Wayne, Indiana. So let's just go ahead and get into it. Um, it went viral on Thursday, and that's how I initially saw the story. Now this is coming from Wayne.com, uh, 15 CBS. Reports of slurs, taunts, and feeling uncomfortable at Homestead High came before blackface outrage. This article was wrote by Jamie Duffy on the 9th yesterday. Slurs uttered in the hallway, taunts to go back from where you came from, teachers and administrators indifferent to complaints, and then a social media post of a student wearing blackface set off the small minority population at Homestead High School and they demanded to be heard. That's what students told Wayne 15 after a Thursday morning assembly to address the outrage felt by them and their peers after the blackface photo appeared on social media and nothing was done about it. Senior Aaliyah Griggs says it's part of a culture that's been going on for years. Us kids just want to feel comfortable in this school. There's no reason that us minority students should not feel comfortable coming to school, Griggs said outside the high school, just after a lockout was declared by administrators. One post circulating social media shows a physical altercation that reportedly broke out at the end of the assembly. Aaliyah Griggs and three young men who are waiting for permission from their parents opened up to Wayne 15 on the racial problems at the high school. We feel the school tends to favor them, white kids, Aaliyah Griggs said, because the school is predominantly white. We bring things to their attention before we make it an outrage. Like today, we spoke up for ourselves. We go to the administration and they just don't say anything. They just kind of like throw it behind the bush and forget about it and just try to say it's a good school. We're always on our tippy toes. We always feel like we can't do this because they're going to single us out. We're even uncomfortable with some of our teachers. We definitely feel like there should be 10 times more diversity in our staff and our administration. I believe there's only four African-American teachers and administrators, and we just feel like our voices aren't heard, Aaliyah Grigg said. The truth of the matter is they don't understand what we're saying. They don't understand we're not comfortable. Grigg said slurs are often muttered. I do know under their breath. People have been saying derogatory things, and even in the meeting today, they used the phrases like, quote, big black girls, end quote, Griggs reported. No one said it was unacceptable, she added. There have been outbreaks in the past on social media saying derogatory things, and we feel like nothing is being done about it. We need them to teach people. Obviously, this is something that is taught at home, that this is okay, and we need this to be brought back into the school and taught that it's not okay in any race, in all nationalities, Aaliyah Griggs said. She said it's better for the school to be diverse and that it brings a lot more to the school. Four years ago, she feared attending Homestead because she wasn't sure how she'd be treated, she said. What will be done? Griggs said at the end of the meeting, people circulated with notebooks and took suggestions. Aaliyah Griggs said the principal, Susan Summers, announced that the school would start to include more information on Black Lives Matter and there would be diversity information on the walls, like posters noting Black History Month. So far, there's nothing celebratory of Black people and how far we've come, Aaliyah Griggs said. A few teachers acknowledge Black history and most of them teach social studies or history, she added. All the paintings on the wall are white people. There's no inclusivity. No black people, no Indian, no Asian. It's not inclusive. It almost feels like we're trapped, like we're the outcasts of it. Aaliyah Griggs believes the problem is growing as the African-American population increases at the school. Three friends caught up with Wayne 15 after the school was put under a lockout following a reportedly riotous assembly where they said two girls started fighting and then the fight escalated to include other students. 
We decided to protest because the school wasn't willing to do anything, the junior said, referring to the social media post that started the outrage. We were peacefully protesting, and then people who weren't part of it started being not civil with us. They started bringing us down. The junior said fights occur rarely at Homestead, and he was shocked the teachers didn't try to put a stop to it. Instead, students and school law enforcement officers broke up the fights. It's the worst thing I've ever seen here, he said. The sophomore referred to the history of trouble at the school regarding minorities. Not even black skin, but people who transferred here from another country. They tell them to go back to their country, the sophomore said. We don't like you. We hate you. The privileged also make assumptions about people who live in apartments, the sophomore said. The junior said white kids who have grown up with a certain privilege has led them to entitled behavior towards everyone, not just minorities. I've seen white people be mean to each other. What I saw today, it hurt. The freshman said his folks usually tell me that you've got to be glad for what you have, that some people would die to have this, but you work so hard to get here, and this is how you get treated? Like there's so many ways that you belong here. You don't deserve to get treated any other way, he said. What I saw today, it hurt. The fight that broke out during the assembly was between two girls. One of the girls used a racial slur. She thought it was cool to say it again, the sophomore said. Some students used the assembly as an excuse to skip class, he added. The sophomore said he's been accused of things he didn't do. But still, I'd get in trouble for it. The people need to know what happened here and that it's not okay. We're just teenagers. We might be play fighting in the hallways. If it's between two black kids, we get in trouble, like an out-of-school suspension. If it's a white kid, they won't get in trouble. As an example, the sophomore said the girl who used the N-word was escorted out of the school, but didn't suffer any punishment for using the word. Injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere, said the freshman, quoting Martin Luther King Jr., all of them believe there was a lockout at the school yesterday because administrators were afraid someone could be outside with a weapon. Sack's parents speak out. It's not a homestead issue. It's a Southwest Allen County Schools issue. Nassim Khan, a Sack's parent since 2016, has dealt with issues for years. Her biracial children have been called names and her older son was told he was going to be deported after the 2016 election, she said. This is not something that's new. This is something that's been going on for years, and parents have tried to get things done. It's going to take a united front to implement programs and solutions, said Khan, who attended the news conference on Thursday. Even though she believes things happen for a reason, and the most recent case that sparked the outrage may get the attention of the people who need to change the system, it's not just about this one situation, she said. There's a cultural indifference in Southwest Allen County Schools. Segregation is still in Southwest Allen County Schools. Her most recent problem came with Sachs, with Sachs, came when her middle school son received lunch detention and was supposed to eat his lunch in a school office. He called his mother upset he hadn't eaten. A school administrator not only said she saw him come in with a lunch, but was witnessing him eating his lunch when Khan called the office. However, when the principal checked the cameras at Woodside Middle School, there was no evidence that he ate his lunch, Khan said. We're going to put it on blast. It didn't have to come to this. People need to be taken seriously, Khan said. She believes a cultural change will come with referendums, new policies, and an outside source that could act as a referee or moderator when racial or discrimination issues arise. We need a group of people who don't work for Southwest Allen County Schools to be able to help these children navigate through whatever issue they may be dealing with, Con said, adding that these problems affect a student's mental health. It's not a homestead issue. It's a Southwest Allen County issue.
Coverage on this story today. Wayne 15 reporter Jamie Duffy spent the day at Homestead talking with a lot of students and parents. Let's start with the students. What were they telling you today about today's events and, and really the culture that they say is at Homestead High School? I would say that the most, the most unusual thing is that this has been going on for years. They have tried to tell the administration and the teachers this is going on. Nobody's been listening. The other side of this culture is the consequences. Uh, they gave me an example of, let's say, that we're two black kids were having like a playful fight in the hallway. That might end or result in a suspension, whereas if it were their white peers, it wouldn't. And so they said this has been going on and on, and it's time for change. And it, parents uh, voice frustrations as well, saying that past inaction, they say, with the administration and, and the entire district. That's right. Uh, we did talk to one parent who's been there for six years with her children. She's had three children who are either going through the system or they have gone through the system. Her daughter was called racial names. Her son was told uh, he was going to be deported. It's this kind of stuff that goes on and on. Every time she would talk to an administrator, uh, it would fall on deaf ears. She said she's hoping that an outside group will now help students and the rest of the school administration get through these incidences and turn the school district around. Right. There, People really hoping that there will be a change this time. Let's take a look listen to some of what they said. We want change. We want change. I'm pretty sure people up here got siblings at Summit that's coming up to Homestead. I want my little siblings to feel safe in their school. I want them to feel comfortable and accepted. There have been you know, parents going up to the schools and talking about what their children are going through, reaching out to the superintendent, reaching out to Southwest Allen County Schools. Parents, um, when they see me vocalize about what my son has gone through they reach out oh this happened to my child and oh I wish I would have been as vocal when my son was in Woodside years ago there's a cultural indifference in Southwest Allen County Schools SACS Superintendent Park Ginder said today in that press conference that we told you about earlier, quote, our work as a school and as a district and as a community is only beginning. Fort Wayne NAACP president also met with Ginder today. He tells me that they are planning to meet again next week and work to come up with ways to move forward. Outrage at Homestead High School. The big story we've been following for you all day on air and online. Students protest after a picture surfaced online showing a student in blackface. The protest happened this morning in the school's auditorium. After the students returned to regular school activities, Superintendent Park Ginder hosted a press conference. Wayne 15's Ethan Dolan was there to ask Ginder questions and joins us with what he said. Ginder opened up with a statement reflecting how the school reacted to the situation before taking questions. Throughout, he emphasized how proud he was of his students and how he wanted to hear them out. Uh, I applaud, I think we all do, applaud the students who stood up this morning. At today's press and conference, applied, uh, Superintendent uh, Park Summers Ginder walked through how the school responded to today's protest, starting by hearing out the students who protested. And then after that gathering, we're allowed and encouraged to gather in a room uh, and share their thoughts and ideas. A process that continued into normal school hours. When the bell rang and it was time to go to class, a lot of kids had things to still talk about, and that's why we stayed until noon. There were also students who attended the conference. They told Wayne 15 that despite trying to talk things over, there were fights between students, and they're not sure the administration heard them out. It was certain students that came in there and they started altercations with other people. So it wasn't organized right. It was only a couple teachers in there listening to us. So was our voice really heard? While well, several students have told Wayne 15 that multiple fights occurred at Homestead today, administration did not confirm the fighting, but simply said there were elevated emotions. Ethan Dolan, Wayne 15 News. We spoke to the president of the Fort Wayne NAACP this morning. Larry Giss says the district needs to take a more active role in disciplining students for acts of racism. And the other, not just this incident, the other incidents that occur, instead of wiping it under the rug, that's the problem right now. If these kids, if the administration would do their job, when they get these complaints, instead of pushing it underneath the rug, maybe stuff like this won't even have occurred. This adds adults in the home play a major role. Now this article also from Wayne 15 says Sachs addresses viral post of Homestead student in blackface. 
Students of color at Homestead High School faced discrimination and racist remarks long before a viral social media post of a student in blackface, according to some students and parents in the school system. The viral post, a picture of a girl smiling in blackface, has prompted outrage, but it was just the tipping point. A lockout at Homestead ensued Thursday, yesterday, amid protests at the school, stemming from the post that also includes a video of a girl making offensive and derogatory comments about Harriet Tubman. The post began circulating this week, however, Sachs administration said it was originally posted last summer, and they began investigating this on Wednesday. Many commenters found the post even more offensive due to the timing of Black History Month. The Instagram account that originally shared the live post live streamed a video Thursday morning of students protesting at Homestead and voicing their concerns. Wayne 15 live streamed at 1 p.m. press conference in which Sachs Superintendent Park Gender addressed the viral post. It's imperative that as a community we understand everybody's value and that means everybody, Gender said, this won't be tolerated. Students said at least one fight broke out during the protest. The district did not comment or confirm any fights. Wayne 15 asked Gender about another social media post that showed a gun with a caption telling the student in blackface to come on out. We saw that too, Gender said. The investigation has gone on and we're confident about where that came from or didn't come from. The superintendent did not elaborate further on the post or the fights that the students allege. Gender estimated about 50 students gathered in a meeting with administrators and while the viral post prompted the meeting, the conversation encompassed talk of discrimination policies, the language used surrounding topics on race, and improving the school culture beyond their, this specific situation. Gender said no comments will be made directly about the student depicting blackface because she is a juvenile. Indiana Ultimate Fort Wayne, a cheer organization that Wayne 15 has confirmed, was connected to the girl in blackface. Announced Thursday, the student is now a former athlete and no longer associated with the group. We have been made aware of recent social media posts in which an athlete associated with our gym is seen engaging in racist behavior and making racist comments. Indiana Ultimate condemns such behavior and this student is no longer with our program. According to Homestead's event calendar, there is no school tomorrow, a move that was already scheduled as a teacher in service day, meaning students would not be in school anyway. Fort Wayne president of the NAACP so told Wayne 15, this isn't the first time racism has been reported in the school system. If administration would do their job when these, they get these types of complaints, instead of pushing it underneath the rug, maybe stuff like this wouldn't even have occurred. Now, Sachs sent out two emails. This is the first email. Sachs Community. The purpose of this message is to acknowledge awareness of a situation and communicate with our students, staff, parents, and community. The district is aware of a social media post involving a Homestead High School student. The image, although taken last summer, is circulating now and is highly offensive and no way represents our district's values and efforts to provide a school culture that is safe, supportive, and welcoming for all students. The student involved is not on campus today, and we are working to take appropriate next steps. We take great comfort knowing our student body will not stand by or be part of intolerance and hate. Not only do they make us aware of this image, sharing it with the staff, many of our students stood in unity in a peaceful protest prior to the start of school this morning. Recognizing an incident of this nature will affect not only our students, but our entire community. We will be communicating further with you later today. We are working with our students now. Email 2 says, as promised, we said we would communicate with you later today. And on behalf of Sachs, I would like to thank you for your patience. Ideally, I would have communicated with you earlier, but our time and efforts were spent with our students. This morning, we let you know of a social media post that we became aware of yesterday. The nature of the post was racial, and because of its vast circulation throughout our community, our students arrived at school to stand in solidarity with their peers in a peaceful protest prior to the start of school. 
It was obvious after the bell rang to start the day, students still needed to talk and to be heard. Students moved into a classroom and then to the auditorium as the group grew. Administrators worked to listen to the group's concerned and concerns and moderated the conversation, asking for ways in which our community could better strengthen school culture for all students. Many suggestions were merely ideas, and others were a blueprint to change. It was enlightening and heartbreaking at the same time. The conversation was at times loud and emotional, and other times direct and poignant. With tensions high, there were instances where emotions played out in poor student behavior and conduct. As a precaution, it was decided to issue a lockout at Homestead. A lockout allows for business as usual in the school, but no one leaves or enters the building. At approximately the same time, our SROs were made aware of new social media posts where a threat was made and a gun was pictured. School administrators decided to hold the students in the classroom or period they were in until the end of the day while law enforcement investigated the post. The Allen County Sheriff's Department was able to trace the threat to an individual outside the Sachs District and made an arrest. We are thankful for their assistance throughout the day. Today, our district was challenged. The racial unrest we are seeing across the country was front and center in our community. To move forward, to be better, we must continue to facilitate and engage in conversation and take action that strengthens not only our culture and sac at SACS, but resonates throughout the entire community. We took a step forward today, but our work is just beginning. We remain committed to this effort. The email continues and says, you will receive further communication from me in the near future. Included will be our next steps. SACS District Office. It goes on to say, Gender encouraged parents of students to be honest when having conversations around this issue. The superintendent said he spoke with several classes. The only way we can make this work is to understand that your peers, other homestead Spartans, are hurt. And the way you respond to that is going to be important. As we all know, there are agitators in every crowd. It's imperative we know that cooler heads prevail and we continue to talk. Now, if we take this incident and we compare it to the incident that I just posted yesterday, um, we can see how it was handled completely different. Um, this Sachs um, administrators, school system, responded quickly. Um, they addressed it. They, I mean, they took every possible measure that they could take. Now, will something be done? I don't know. But it's all in the way you handle it. Um, and, and there was a lot of people saying, but what did the, what did the school do wrong? What, what the, these girls talking about the case in Philadelphia? Well, when you go to a school, you are a representative of that school, um, your behavior represents that school. Just like this student um, that posted the blackface picture uh, was associated with uh, a certain organization. They quickly came on to condemn what she did and disassociate themselves with her. That's how it works. That's what happens. Um, sports organizations do it all day long. People do not want to be affiliated with someone who behaves like that and they're not wrong in speaking out about it if you find out you have a bad seed among the bunch you're going to disassociate yourself with them um i, I got some of the most outrageous comments on my last video regarding the incident at saint hubert's catholic high school some of the most ridiculous comments, um, as a matter of fact. But um, it didn't matter where the girls went to school. Uh, it's all about what they did. Um, but people were seeming to take issue with the fact that uh, one of the girls didn't go to that school or what have you. Um, I would denounce the school. Uh, that she went to. It, it doesn't matter. 
The fact that they did this is the issue. It is not okay to do that. And, and you're looking into other things, but you're not addressing the issue. Um, so the issue here in um, Fort Wayne, Indiana, is that the school system is uh, behind times, period. And they have chose not to address it. So now they have an incident where they are forced to address it. And it sounds like from their talk um, that they may do just that. Now, um, what steps are they going to take to do that? I don't know. What solution, the, the solution here, I don't know. But um, the way they handled it uh, when it came out, that's what you would expect someone to to do. Um, St. Hubert's didn't do that. I'm sorry, they didn't do that. So, um, and I am going to follow up on that story, by the way. But I just wanted to bring this to the channel because it's odd that I would have two of these exact same instances uh, back to back and to see how different the two were handled. So, um, I welcome all comments. Please be respectful. Uh, don't get it twisted. And um, I'm going to end it on that note. Thanks for watching, guys.